Let us prepare for worship this morning. Please open our minds and our hearts this morning. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, he immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news. He set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samoas, following the day, the following day, to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and the Roman and a Roman colony. We remained, we remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside to the gate by the river, where we were supposed supposed to there was a place of prayer. He sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Pariah and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. starting my week that way, and I hope you do as well. Hallelujah. I do have a few announcements this morning, uh, some of the traditional ones that you, you, you've come to uh, recognize. We do have uh, a new uh, Sunday morning beginning uh, reflection, fellowship, and reconnection at 9.30. I do invite all of you to attend uh, each, each Sunday morning. Uh, right now we're meeting in the yellow room, and the pastor and uh, the group has, has uh, uh, faithfully met for the last few weeks and it's growing and it's uh, engaging, so I encourage you to join us. Uh, following service, there's also uh, our Zoom fellowship, which is uh, generally attended by those who aren't here on, on Sunday morning, so we'll continue to do that as well. A Bible study meets on Wednesday, Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. Zoom. It's a Zoom meeting, so we encourage you, if you haven't tried it, to, to join Mark and his group. Uh, it's always a wonderful uh, conversation and, and uh, quite, quite a good learning experience. Uh, Thursday evening, this, this Thursday evening at 7 p.m., we will have uh, an Ascension worship uh, service. Uh, it's the conclusion of the Easter season, and, and we invite you to join us here at Christ Church at 7 p.m. Pastor will lead us in, in worship. Uh, he may have a word or two uh, later, later in, in the service. A um, couple other quick things. Just uh, I want to let you know that the uh, online giving is is uh, consistently growing. So we have many many of our members uh, contributing. Uh, shortly, you will be seeing uh, cards in the pews. Uh, indicating that you have given online. So when the offering is taken, uh, you'll have something to, to, to share uh, on Sunday morning and night. It may already be there, I'm gonna be told to wait. Uh, so uh, so that, that will, uh, now you have that as well. I'll remind you that July 3rd, we have our July uh, concert uh, here in the parking lot. 
should be a fun afternoon. It's this year, it's in the afternoon, early, uh, early this year, and uh, we, we uh, are preparing uh, for, for that celebration. I wanted to let you know that Christine and I attended a, uh, a workshop uh, job fair at the Norristown High School. Um, we are actively looking for uh, student interns who can help us with the IT piece of the church worship, uh, the uh, upgrading of our website and our courier. And so we're anxious to see uh, what the young people can do and help us uh, with as we uh, develop uh, a more visual and more informative way of communicating with the community here. Starting in June, the first Sunday in June, we'll resume our lemonade conversation out in the parking lot, weather permitting, weather permitting, we'll be back inside uh, if, it, if it's raining. But first Sunday in June, I look for a lemonade and some kind of cookie or cake or something. Um, June 11th is our uh, trustee work day, and, uh, and all those who are uh, interested in helping out or Pointing, uh, you can join us on that day. Uh, we'll we'll uh, give the church a good, thorough house cleaning and, and uh, look forward to your, 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 uh, your joining us. Uh, last Sunday, Vicki and I attended with uh, Ascension's 175th what, uh, anniversary, I say wedding, uh, anniversary uh, here, here locally, our, our sister church up the street. Uh, celebrating their 175 years. Uh, very similar to our 125 year service. Uh, very, very nice and very well done. And, and uh, we enjoyed a bunch of that at, at Chaps following, following worship. Uh, very nice. So I represented us and, and uh, we, uh, we sent, sent our, our blessings. This morning, Scott, our organist is on vacation and, and a pre planned vacation, and we welcome Ray Johnson this morning again. Nice to have you with us. Uh, it's wonderful to hear you, and nice to have you, so thank you. Uh, and finally, I noticed this morning that we have several guests, so I want to welcome each of you uh, warmly and let you know that uh, we're happy that you're sharing your Sunday morning worship with us, and we look forward to uh, your. your uh, coming again, so thank you. Are there any sharings from the congregation? Proceed. begin with the call to worship. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. May your reign be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon them. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Almighty, Almighty and merciful God, you created in our sin soul. In your, your presence, our limits lie stark before us. We confess our unclean lips, our cold hearts, our turning away from neighbors, our broken promises, and our unrepentant hours. Forgive us, O Holy One. We confess that we have squandered the gifts you have given. We have used each other. We have loved power more than people. 
Forgive us, O Holy One. Cleanse from us the illusion of innocence. Come into our hearts. Make us new again. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus Christ, God knows us and receives us as we are. Listen, give thanks, and live. are found in Revelations chapter 21, verse 10, 22 through 27, and chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. And in the Spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of the heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need for sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is, is in its light, and its lamp is the lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the land of book of life. And the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of the God of the land. 
in the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruits, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and the servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more light. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And this morning from John chapter 14, verses 23 through 29. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything remind you all that I have to say to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do, not, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you will rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. Now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it occurs, you will believe. Here ends the readings of the familiar scriptures. May God add his blessings upon you. There is a place of quiet rest. Near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest. Near to the heart of God, oh Jesus, bless me.
of a new battery in this league, so I won't cut out that many things out of here. Rarely do I get the lovely honor to call the children forward. If any of the children would like to come forward for a brief message, anyone who's not not too shy, anyone who'd like to come spend just a minute or two with me, I'd love that. Hi, what are your names? This Very nice to meet you all. I'm Pastor Kent. Now, one of these kids is dressed as a princess. Did you know that they're all princesses? Because if your father, your father above, but also maybe your father here on earth, or fathers, is a king, then that makes you a princess. And we know that God is the king of the universe. We know that Jesus is the king. And we hope that your fathers aspire to be kings, to keep you always princesses in the eyes of the whole world. So that you can take good gifts to everyone who needs them. Now, a gift I want to bring to you maybe isn't so exciting. Let me see on my tie here. Books. Books, yeah. For about 30 years, I was a bookseller in different kinds of book businesses. And when my wife bought this tie for me, oh, around 2000. I was very excited. I thought it was so cool. So my first trip out that year was to go to Ann Arbor, Michigan to a company that no longer exists. Um, now I'm drawing a blank on their name. Uh, but I got there. Every other salesperson sitting there had this tie. <laughs> I wasn't as unique as I thought of it was. But it did show that we all really Love books. Now, the book I love the most in the whole world is the Bible. You guys probably have a Bible in your house. Maybe you read it with your parents. Maybe you hear the stories out of it or see it on TV. Uh, it's, it's a special book. As a matter of fact, it's the book that teaches us how to read all of the books. Because you read it assuming that you don't know anything you want to be taught. And that's what we. Elizabeth was right when she said, this represents knowledge. But it's not also what's in the book, it's what's inside you. Your spirit, your mind, your experience, your way of looking at the world. Now I'll tell you a little secret. As special as this book is to me, I've read 2,000 other books. And I have about 4,000 to read in the next however many years I have before I can no longer read books. So I've got a lot of work to do. But what I find is something special happens when I open a book. And this is actually a blank book. But it represents all books because when you open a book, it lights. It lights your world. It lights your spirit. It gives you knowledge. Now you have to kind of understand what it's telling you. And maybe you've read another book that says something different. And that you've got to kind of learn which is right, which is wrong, which is true, which is not true. But if you read enough books, you start to see a picture of the world. A picture of the world that we really live in. It could be a cookbook to teach you how to make good food. It could be a manual to teach you how to fix cars. It could be history or biography. It could be a fairy tale. It could be hundreds of thousands of things. Now, when you read these, 
Jesus. Standing behind you, if you take the time not just to read it, but to study it, you have something that tells you about what truth really is. And so when you look at facts, when you look at suggestions, opinions, when you look at how people see the world, this will help you. This will be like a lens. It will be like the glasses that you have, the glasses that I wear so I can see better. This helps you see better what's in all the other books. So start with your Bible. Don't stop there. Don't stop being curious. Don't stop being creative. Don't stop wondering, well, why do people say that's true? How can I live better? How can I make myself and other people happier? And some of that you can find in books. And when you close the book, maybe that light goes out, but also now the light is in you. And you go to other people they read you, and you read them, and that's how you share your spirit, yourself, your knowledge, always with the hope that not whether you win or lose, that you learn something new, that you feel stronger about, and more courageous about living life to the best. Let's say a short prayer. Gracious God, there are princesses among us, and also princes. Because you are the great king, you dwell in our hearts. We also are mothers and fathers ourselves. And boy, do we strive to be kings and queens so that our children may know your royal sovereignty, your authority, your love and your joy so that all the days of their lives as of our lives we may truly worship you and live to your glory we pray this in jesus name amen thank you you can go back to your parents hopefully i'll see you again sometime Next to baptism, that's the best thing that can happen on a Sunday morning is to have kids come forward and to share with them. Uh, I'm a little out of practice. Uh, if I spoke way over their heads, it's because it's very impromptu. Usually I have time to think about what I'm going to say before I say it. Uh, but uh, I hope that they and you get a little sense of how beloved they truly are. Now it's interesting in the passage from Revelation this morning that uh, there's a phrase in there, a phrase, something that ends with our health and our salvation. We had a healing service here last week and I explained that salvation isn't so much being saved from sin as it is or being saved from hell, as it is being healed or made whole. And that passage gave a perfect, perfect example of what that is. But we also then have Jesus getting ready to take his leave, which we will celebrate on Thursday night. And I hope many or all of you can be here. Of the four special nights of the church year, Ash Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Ascension Day, and Christmas Eve, Ascension Day has somewhat fallen out of uh, practice in a lot of congregations. Now, the congregations I served previously have all been in rural settings, and it was very important to them because it was a mark of 
the beginning or near the beginning, uh, you cannot mark these things exactly, of the planting season and kind of the, the verge of summer, getting ready for the new life that was going to spring forth. And so for the farmers in particular and their families, they love an Ascension Day uh, service. So I thought I would reintroduce it here, not one because in addition to that connection, it really is the last event of the resurrection story. It gives us that little 10 day gap, 40 days after Jesus has risen. There's a 10 day gap where you might think, well, they've been abandoned by Jesus and the Holy Spirit hasn't come yet, so the world's on its own for those 10 days. That's not a Exactly true. I think what Jesus is telling them is that they will assume a new standing with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit has not left the world or the care of them. But they will, in fact, receive the Holy Spirit in the same way that Jesus received the Holy Spirit. That, in fact, they will stand in the place of the Word with the Father. Now, beyond that simple description, lots of ink has been wasted on how can that be, instead of saying, amazing. God is putting us in the same kind of position that the Lord, God's Son, Jesus Christ, has occupied. Jesus has stepped aside and said, love them as you've loved me, to the Father. Because the Father told him to do that. What the words you have heard are not mine, they come from the Father. It's all the will of the Father, and Jesus submits to that. Does that mean Jesus no longer has the Holy Spirit? No. But again, why waste ink on trying to define it down to the last uh, bit of understanding? We tend to want answers to everything. And sometimes the answers are beyond our capacity. So we've got Jesus. This Thursday, every 40 days after every Easter, ascending. Ascending from our presence in a way he ascended from the presence of his first disciples. This is our opportunity to Await the Holy Spirit. We do it every year. It's not like it's foreign to us. And yet, because we live in time, we need that cyclical nature of the church year. That renewal of, I'm a child of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who teaches me about who Jesus is. Do not lean on your own understanding. You can open that Bible all you want, and if the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you, doesn't show you, doesn't allow you to exercise your own capacities to come to an understanding, you will not be reading Holy Scripture. You'll just be reading words. The Bible becomes holy because of the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the primary reason why Jesus left it. But wait. Jesus left. Paul didn't come along and start writing for another 20 years or so. The Gospels were even later. So what scripture was God revealing who Jesus is to those who came before those writings? Well, it is, of course, the Hebrew Bible. Everything that you would want to discern about who Jesus is, is there, but more as an undertone. And then you get that kind of over-the-top message from Paul and John and Matthew, Luke, Mark, and some of the other writers of the epistles. So, Jesus says he wants to leave us with peace. 
And most of us would say, well, I'd have a whole lot more peace if I knew what the whole story was. If I really knew that I have the Holy Spirit. Now, in a Pentecostal church, they test one another spontaneously through the speaking of in tongues. Those of us of the German background are a little too staid and a little too um, reserved to express ourselves in that way. Uh, we tend to be more rational about what we, um, what we experience and how we experience it. We don't need to gainsay what happens in other places, but we need to give ourselves the opportunity to realize that one way of knowing if you have the Holy Spirit is to look back on who you were before. The Holy Spirit is so. At 27, when I finished at Andover Newton, I could not have been a pastor. I was so full of myself. I had to write, don't take yourself so effing seriously and post it right in front of me at my desk because I thought I knew everything. I thought I understood everything. I thought I could do anything. I probably should still have that sign somewhere in my office, but uh, what I was then was not the same person that God shaped me into in my 50s and called me to ministry. I needed the maturing. I needed going through things that taught me I could not control the world. Many of you have had that same experience. Many of you still live with certain mysteries in your lives that you can't quite understand fully, understand even partially, perhaps. So where is the peace of Jesus? Well, it's in the trust of Jesus. Trusting that when Jesus, who said, they're going to arrest me, beat me, spit on me, hang me on a cross, but on the third day I'll rise, the temple will be rebuilt. The temple that our scripture in Revelation just said is God the Father and the Lamb. And on the 40th day, I am now going to be with the Father, to sit at the right hand of the Father. But wait, the Holy Spirit will come upon me. Well, let's see, right about point one, point two, point three, point four. We believe on Pentecost, point five. Trust Jesus. Trust that when Jesus says, I'm leaving peace with you, but not peace the way you would understand it in the world, that it is the point of trust, the point of saying, I don't need to know or understand everything because I know Jesus. And I'm beginning to understand the Holy Spirit in my life. And I can't imagine that there's anyone here over the age of 14, anyway, who hasn't gotten to that point in their life where they can look back and say, what I once was, I am no longer. Talk about miracles. Talk about Talk about finding a point of joy in your life. Are you what you think you can be and should be and what God wants you to be? No. But when you look back and see where you've been and what it took to get through to get to where you are now, loss, separation, pandemic, war, loss of a spouse, loss of a child, whatever loss it may be that you've 
gone through or pain that you've suffered. The Holy Spirit, like the Good Shepherd, was there walking you through it. I don't believe God causes those things to happen in order to test you or to uh, try you as silver being purified. That's just a happy bonus. That is, you living a human life, every life that's ever lived has had to go through all of those things, and yet you've walked through it with the one who says, even in the midst of this, you have my peace. Now, to conclude, You have every right to come forward and say to me, stop taking yourself so seriously. You don't know everything. I expect you not just to read your Bibles, as I told the children, but to study them. And if you see something different, something that would teach me that what I'm telling you is not the Word of God as it, as it is written, not the Word of God as the one who created the universe, not the word of God as one who sits within us and among us and teaches us the way to live with God and with one another. And please tell me, tell me if I'm leading you astray. I don't want to be one of the bad shepherds. I don't think anybody actually ever did. But when you start taking yourself so seriously, you sometimes say what you don't mean to say. If we had more time, I'd ask for the rebuttals. <laughs> <laughs> but given the fact that we do try to stick to an hour every Sunday morning, let me just then say, may God bless all the kings and queens and the princesses and the princes among us so that we may glorify God by the good things we do and help God's plan to heal and save the world. Amen. Amen.
definition of faith today is from the Kansas City Statement, which is a historical rest, uh, document from the E and R Church, one of the two main branches of uh, the church that came together to form the UCC. Please join along with me. We believe in God, the Father, and the Mother of us all, in the infinite wisdom, goodness, and love, and in Jesus Christ, God's Word, our Lord and Savior, who for us and our salvation lived and died and rose again and lives evermore, and in the Holy Spirit, who takes of the things of Christ and reveals them to us, renewing comforting and inspiring the souls of humanity. We are united in striving to know the will of God as taught in the Holy Scriptures and in our purpose to walk in the ways of the Lord, may be known to us. We hold it to be the mission of the Church of Christ to proclaim the gospel to all humanity exalting worship of the one true God, and laboring for the progress of knowledge, the promotion of justice, the reign of peace, and the realization of human unity and harmony. Thank you that you did our prayers upon the continued guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead us in all truth. We work and pray for the transformation of the world into the kingdom of God, and we look with faith for the triumph of righteousness and a life everlasting. You may be seated. As always, I encourage you to look in your bulletins to our prayer list. There are people and activities that need our prayers, those who are homebound or in residential living or other situations, those who are ill or injured, those who are homeless or out of work, all of the many people who suffer from one thing and another. We also pray for our homes and our communities. We know that in our communities there are problems with gangs, with abuse, with addiction, with mental health issues, and a whole host of other things that we could spend literally all our lives trying to address and yet feel perhaps that we don't make the headway we would like. So I draw your attention to all those things in addition. But I also invite you now if you have a particular prayer that you'd like to share with the congregation, uh, just to stand up. Uh, let's say our first name and um, what the prayer request is, which I will repeat so that everyone can hear what it wants. Is there anyone who would like to share a request today? Mary Lou? My name's Mary Lou, and I would like a special prayer for my sister-in-law in Texas who had a stroke. Uh, she's coming along pretty well, I think, uh, and just pray she Okay. Prayers for Mary Lou's sister-in-law in Texas who's had a stroke and needs some help with smoking cessation. Pat, I think I saw your hand. Margaret Elba. So pray for her daughter who took 
Thank you. So Pat asks us to pray for her daughter, Kristen, who's struggling with her sobriety, but uh, to all appearances, has her mind right in all other prayers and Pat, her family's help will help keep her on course. And then also prayers for the Elba family on the loss of their mother and uh, that they may have got comfort and strength and healing during this time. Christine? My prayers for my landlord. Uh, it's been an interesting and a very difficult time. Uh, he's gone through a lot of physical and mental health issues. Uh, and he was placed in substance abuse a few years ago. Uh, he's gone into the hospital again. Uh, I ask prayers. Christine asked prayers for her landlord who is in the hospital and has issues with substance abuse and other physical issues and really needs the support of our prayers as well as the support of Christine and Danny and those who uh, know him and care for him. I'd like to have prayers this morning for uh, one of our members. Jordan Lesher. Uh, Jordan has uh, accepted a new position in, in his career. Uh, he is uh, changing into a new field. Uh, it's a very exciting time for him. Uh, we're happy for him and we hope that uh, it's the best for him. For, for, for our uh, sadness, he is relocating. Staying in Pennsylvania, but moving west. Uh, but it's a very exciting time for him, a well earned opportunity. And so uh, I'd like you to keep your, your minds and thoughts in, in, in him as he uh, begins this new journey, uh, beginning in, in uh, mid to late summer. So uh, we, we, we wish you the very, very best. So, Jim, I think you can probably all hear that. The prayers for Jordan and his change of life, new direction. Uh, he will be sadly missed. And uh, I know there's a whole group of ladies who sit in the middle who are going to miss his handsome face. <laughs> yes. Um, good morning, my name is Casey. Uh, I'm a guest here. And I would like to first thank you guys for receiving me so warmly in the spirit of Christ. Um, I'd like to offer a prayer Casey, who is a guest, prays to God that our congregation will be blessed to continue to thrive and uh, that we will continue to be united by the Holy Spirit in our mutual love. That's basically what you were saying on day. Let us pray. Gracious God, this morning we are a bunch of chatterboxes. Sometimes I ask for a prayer request and you just get one. So please send your spirit upon me that I remember all those who have a request that as we pray I might recognize, even with a few words, that that which they would have me remember. Of course, you are the Lord of creation and the Lord of our salvation and redemption and therefore also the lord of our completion the lord of the fulfillment of your word in the world so that the creation has a beginning and an end and yet also has an everlasting aspect where heaven and earth will then come together a new heaven and a new earth 
And as we look forward toward that, let us not forget to look around us and to live the lives that we have. This morning in our discussion group, no, uh, the idea was noted that sometimes, particularly the wisdom of the world is live in the moment. But if you don't live even just with your eye a little bit on the next moment, how would you know where you're going and what you're doing? The journey may be important, but without a destination, is it really even a journey? Therefore, as we have journeyed through our lives, you've born us, you've raised us, you've given us purposeful and useful work, you've given us knowledge, you've given us a will to achieve, whether it's a little or a lot, that is not truly the measure. It's that we are involved and that we participate in the work that you do in the world. So this morning, we of course pray as we always do for the wounds of the world, those that are close to home, those that are nearby, and yet also those that are far away. We think of those who are lonely, living by themselves, unable to leave their homes. We think of those who are homeless, who would benefit greatly from some kind of care, whether we ourselves can provide it or we can support those who would provide it. We think of those who are living with war, who are refugees or combatants, who are on the offense and on the defense. May your wisdom, may your desire for peace and healing be instilled in their hearts. We pray for those who are suffering and struggling. Perhaps they are in the hospital, perhaps they are in a program, perhaps they need strong physical presence of someone who will love them, love them as you have loved us, so that they may see the light at the end of their tunnel, that they may know that perseverance will pay off. We pray also for their caregivers and those beloved who support them in everything that they do. We pray for one who is leaving us, and we'll probably pray for him again and again over the next few weeks. And even after he's gone, he will be in our thoughts. Every change of life has a little bit of mystery, but there's also a little bit of fear. Is this the right thing to do? Am I jumbling up my life for a pipe dream? And yet, if we persevere in trusting you, and we see every opportunity as a call to do service to you in addition to our livelihood, our family, our friends, whatever else may be impacted by this change, we know that we can trust you and that we can see our way forward. As I said prior to even beginning our prayer, we pray for those who struggle with addiction. We pray for those who are living with abuse. We pray for those who have no hope for their economic future. We pray for those who are curious and would love to learn but do not have the resources either to continue learning or to find ways to supplement what they would like to do. Part of that, of course, is always finding your sense of purpose. For one struggling with addiction, often it's because they feel purposeless in their life. If you let them know through others and directly by your Holy Spirit, that they are beloved, then they will have purpose to serve others as you serve them. That can be very healing. That can be very saving. Finally, O oh Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon this church. And we ask, as Casey has asked us, to remember us, to 
goad us, to shake us up so that complacency or lack of energy does not become an issue, but that we see possibilities beyond possibilities, even beyond impossibilities, are there for a church in the middle of a wonderful neighborhood, in a place with lots of history, with people who need to know your love, want to know your love, just we need to find a place to fulfill that. They may find it in some degree at home. They may find it in some degree at school and with friends and family. But a faith community is a place where they learn that the closeness of family can be extended beyond the walls of a house even beyond the walls of the, of the neighborhood and truly grow into a place where all are welcome, all are received with joy and supported in whatever pursuits they and their God have led them to. Thank you, O Lord. We bless you and praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, and bless you and praise you. We thank you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, O Lord. Bless you and praise you. With the voice of our congregation, and we say, Amen. Now let us pray as Christ our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And thine is the kingdom, and the power. And the glory of God forever. Amen. I remind you that our monthly uh, May Benevolence is Phoebe Winthrop Home. They do wonderful work for the whole community, but also for some among us. The morning offering will now be received.
gracious God, accept with blessing our offerings of ourselves and of our substance, that they may be used to further your purposes in the world and the coming of your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen.
Don't be a sinner.